Hey, hey everybody, this is Larry. I'm doing this poem as part of a contest, so you're gonna watch me live as I go through my thoughts as I'm coding. Uh, there'll be an explanation near the end, and for more context, there'll be a link below on the actual screencast of the contest. Uh, how did you do? Let me know how you do. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and here we go. Uh, Q2, maximum number of rows in a substring of a given length. So this one was... Um, a sliding window as, as soon as I saw it. Um, yeah, so this is sliding window. I was just thinking about how to implement it, and I think I've implemented this pretty quickly, as you will see. But, but the idea, and I, I'll, and this will be part of the explanation, so don't worry if I'm like, if it looks like I'm skipping a little bit. But basically, for each character, we increment or uh, we have a sliding window, and we move from left to right, and so forth, right? And as as we add new characters, we check whether that's an AEIOU, uh, and also we remove characters and then check to see if they're AEIOU, and then in those cases, just increment and decrement appropriately. Um, yeah, there'll be more explanations, so don't worry. That, I mean, that's pretty much it. I'm not really needing to talk that one. But yeah, but after that, you take the best of all the cases. And there you go. Everything match, everything feels good. That's the name. Q2, maximum number of rows in a substring of a given length. Given a string S and integer K, uh, we turn back. So this is, I, I think, so I got this in about 1 minute 40 seconds uh, and the reason is just because this is a very standard uh, sliding window problem and I think I've been in a little bit more practice about it I've been historically I've been actually really bad at sliding windows with respect to off by one but the two things one is that I've been kind of I would say actively pa uh, actively practicing but I've been practicing um, just by doing more problems so that is something that you get a little bit better with uh, and then the second thing is, um, this is actually, I mean, this is a easier sliding window problem. Uh, the conditions are pretty straightforward. Um, so the idea behind this problem is sliding window. And if you're not familiar with sliding window, you should, well, practice it and read it out. But the idea is that given a string, let's just do it random, given any string, uh, you keep track of, the k numbers variable uh, characters in it, and, and when you slide this window, hence name sliding window, when you slide this to the right, well, what does this look like, right? So th these are the two problems that you saw from the previous problem, the last one. So then the difference is you're adding the character a, and then you're subtracting the character t, right? And because here we only want to count the number of rows. When we see an A in the incoming character, which is X in this case, variable names are a little bit terrible, but this is contest, so, you know, excuse me a little bit. Uh, and then if I is, if the index is bigger than K, that means, or greater than, that means if uh, we're going past this, then we have to subtract uh, the, the one that we move. And if that's an AEIOU, which is a wow, uh, we minus the cap. And then we just keep on taking the best count that we can as we slide and going. And that is Q2, uh, the algorithm. Uh, slide window comes up all the time in interviews and competitive programming, as you see here. So, uh, but given in more, uh, and generally in more difficult formats, but it's still a great practice, so definitely recommend it. Uh, what is the complexity? The complexity is just O of N, where N is the uh, size of the S. Uh, and that should be apparent because we look at each character at most once, or well, at most once coming in, and then at most once going out, so at most twice. Uh, and so that's all. And we don't use much extra space. We only have some all one number of variables. So this is of n time, of n of one space, and can really do better than uh, the, the lower bounds. 
so yeah, so that's Q2. Um, I think the, the idea is very simple, conceptually. Uh, the only tricky thing for me, anyway, historically, has been like off by ones and stuff like this. So it's very important to kind of have the right visualization on uh, how you do the index. And as long as you have that, it'll be okay. For me, it's about sometimes I have my right balance inclusive, sometimes my left balance is inclusive, and sometimes the exclusives. As long as you define to yourself exactly what they are, then you could be a little bit more better with the visualization, which allows you to have greener code quicker. Uh, so yeah, 